So before the video starts, I want to apologize for the lagginess of the actual video. Scrap Mechanic's a very graphically demanding game, uh, especially since I set literally all of the settings to max for the graphics-related stuff. So OBS wasn't having a great time recording it, so there was a lot of encoding overloads. So that's why there's some laggy bits, especially when there's a lot of like effects and stuff happening. So I've turned some stuff down. I'm going to remember to turn uh, some settings on Scrap Mechanic down as well, so this way if when I'm recording it again, this stuff won't happen. Happen. Uh, so, sorry for that. Anyways, enjoy the video. Hello everybody, I'm Vim427 and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Now, I haven't made a video on this in a while, unfortunately, but I recently got, you know, back into the groove of playing the game. And, like, again, it's the whole, it's, you know, it's my favorite game and there had been, there had been a passion project that I've been trying to work on for god knows how long. Like, and everyone has made, or not everyone, I shouldn't say everyone, I shouldn't assume, but a lot of people have made their versions of this. But I want to share my version just because I have a tendency of wanting to make things as simple as possible but perform the same complicated functions that other things could. And I present to you my three-dimensional spud carver. So this is something that pretty much once the spud guns came out and there was, you know, cardboard that you could destroy. Everyone, you know, has their own version of it. Either let it be a, like a printer or some form of using spud guns to carve stuff out. And a lot of these, I've realized, have been pretty complicated. And I thought to myself, okay, well, they don't need to be that complicated. Like, it's the whole... Like, it doesn't need to be that hard. And again, one thing people would try to do is... And don't get me wrong, I could have made this much... Essentially, much smaller, but then it would be more complicated. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to have... A, I essentially, wanted to strike a nice, even ground between simplicity and complication. Uh, so, yeah... But everyone usually tries to make it, again, super small, which is totally fine, and I want to try to make it a smaller, smaller, but honestly, I think, I think my, my willpower to do that is, yeah, probably not there. So pretty much how it works is, and I had been toying with this idea for a bit, it might seem complicated, but it's just the fact that there's a lot of wires. Uh, so pretty much how it works is the sensors will detect black, and black is essentially an input, uh, so if it detects black, it will, you know, it'll be on. And then what'll happen, what happens is it goes into a AND gate where there's this button, which pretty much it's the whole this way. Nothing's activated, but it's still detecting stuff. And then it goes into timers that are actually the forms of storage. And the timers are set to about three seconds. This way it's a quicker process. And then these are connected to the spud guns. And so this is just a pulse generator. And this right here, this circuit right here is a timed circuit to flip stuff. And well, I, I should probably, I'm realizing I'm getting like way off track of certain things. I start one thing and then it ends up lean by other things but pretty much how it works is a sensor detects an input if that input is a one so if it's on uh it'll be part of this and gate and again since it's an and gate all of these things must be on in this case this is a one tick pulse to allow all these blocks to be on it sends that into a timer which essentially contains it until a certain point in time and then once it's obviously once you know the timer has activated it will activate the corresponding spud gun and by that time well the spud gun will be in the right position so essentially let me show you as you can see it flips bam and then it flips back so pretty much what happens is instead of having bit memory or like essentially a form of storage that will have to be automatically turned off and can take up quite a bit of space essentially it's a form of storage where it's the whole it stores the data for a set amount of time and within that time uh the whole essentially the whole mechanism rotates and then once that data needs to be used it'll be in the correct position to then you know, activate the spud guns and stuff so here let's flip this around uh what this is is this is just an a, a piece of bit memory that's connected to a timer uh that is set to the exact amount of ticks that it takes for a electric engine set to speed two to rotate uh, this, you know, around, so whenever I press it, it'll go for the exact amount of time, and it will always be 
perfect. Now, that could be debatable, but so far I have not had it not be perfect, so... So as you can see, watch this. There you go, so... Bada bing, bada boom. Oh uh, yeah. One good thing about this, and... Doesn't- this one- this particular one doesn't have this type of problem, is... If I wanted to, in fact, I'll, I'll do it to demonstrate to you. The way that it collects the data, it's the whole, I could stay on this one side. Like, it doesn't have to be constantly flipped around or something. Uh, yeah. It's just, also, it's just smaller. Now, obviously, this can made, be made super big. And the whole idea of this is, I know it's the whole, oh, it's, it, it's, the reason why, I know it sounds weird to say, but it's meant, despite it being bigger, than org and having more stuff than other as you could say carvers or printers whatever this type of general thing in scrap mechanic it's the whole the mechanism itself is simple but in being simple it becomes bigger and things like that so that's why it's the whole like again think about it like Ah, uh, yeah, so let's just rotate that. Uh, I made, I, sp I specifically made it so that these were um, manually operated, just so that there wouldn't be any problems. And it's the whole, it's not that they would cause problems, but essentially there'd be like weird things with timing. And I could totally do it. I could totally make this fully automated, but uh, as of right now, I'm not going to. So let's just keep watching it. There you go. So one benefit to this is since it doesn't have to worry about scanning and since, because essentially what I had been, the, the, what the whole point of this is, is, is essentially where the sense, if this was a, if this, what I'm about to say was a real thing in scrap mechanic, then this would come like be a really big game changer. Pretty much a sensor that has a spud gun integrated into it. So it senses the thing and it shoots it. Because essentially if that was the case, if you could have a spud gun or something behind a sensor, but have it shoot through the sensor, then you could literally just have, like, pulse generator pulsing on and off for the sensor, or for the spud gun, so that if it came across, like, multiple lines of something and you just destroy, it could just go, like, boom, 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 instead of just thunk, and then stay on and stay on, and then, like, have to reload. Yeah, so, I don't know where I'm getting at. Pretty much. So, pretty much how, what this does is, well... It replaces the position of the sensors with the spud guns. So essentially, it's the whole where the sensors would be. And again, to this is this is not self-aware. This does not to the to the mechanism. It thinks oh, okay, this these are always going to be in the same spot. So this is essentially to just firing, and then this bearing just turns as like a part of it. So to it, it's always going to be firing there, and to the sensor, it always thinks it's firing there, and it's just whether what's in frame or not, kind of thing. So yeah, so as you can see, we've carved out a little face. It looks a little shocked there. But, again, with this, because of the way it works, essentially the way the way that you make it is you make, you sculpt these things from like back to front with the carvers, I don't know. Here, to, to demonstrate, let's, so now if we press this, as you can see, it stores the data. Bam, now. As you can see here, I know what you think, okay, well, this one was black, why didn't it do it? Remember when we essentially colored the whole thing of this black? This one was, this, this, this was me making that uh, mistake. This is not the fault of it. So, you know what, we'll do it. We'll do this one more time. Ah, and see, watch, so we're gonna, I should actually do this, because then this means the block behind there is gonna be, black and I don't want it to make it look like the machine made a mistake because in reality I'm the one who did so again you can see that's the one pulse that's stored in there again that pulse is enough to activate the potato the spud gun and yeah so to recap the main mechanism has a sensor that detects whether there is a black the color black within, I think it's it's uh this it's ten blocks or units, whatever you want to call it, ten blocks of the sensor. If it is, once this button is pressed to allow data through, it sends a 
it sends that pulse or whatever that it sends the on signal to this AND gate. And then once the button is pressed, it allows the AND gate to activate. But since this only activates for one pulse, then it goes and and the reason why, now the reason why I chose one pulse is because I didn't want to have it be like I didn't want the spot guns to be on essentially activated for too long because you have to remember it's the whole if I if I do if I have the spud gun down and I do this I have to let the button spud. I can only spam it so much kind of thing so it's the whole you have to let go of the button and what this one tick does is it's not like it's holding down the button for so long uh so it just lets it happen quickly and you know it stops any like weird things from happening uh because it's the whole it's just this quick blip you know it just happens it's in and out nothing in between so sends it to their uh it sends it there so sensors hooked up to the end gate the end gate sets it through and then again the timer the reason why the timer's there is it's against the storage medium so essentially once this is activated so essentially once this is activated the uh it's stored in here but while it's going through this process this timer over here is being activated to essentially it waits one second so what happens is if there's anything in front of it what it'll do is it'll activate it length it'll, it'll keep this not moving while this happens and then it, a little bit so once it's kind of once it's in here about after a certain amount of time once it's essentially once the process of scanning collecting the data is like you it, it, the machine is 100 percent sure that it has happened pretty much then it after some time it rotates it and then once the essentially blip gets to the end of the timer to activate it the piston not the pistons the spud guns are already in the location they need to be and then they'll activate and trust me one of the hardest parts about this was making sure everything lined up because essentially the way it is, is since this flips over since there isn't to make the mechanism easier to just have it spin on an axis instead of having you know this move out of the way with pistons then having these come down so that everything can you know so this sensor corresponds to this one and this sensor corresponds to this one uh everything had to be flipped and it was thankfully it was the whole once once i got the hang of it it was easy to understand but like i had to like sketch on paper like okay if if this is gonna do this then this is gonna blow and if this is gonna so but yeah uh and i know i say this a lot that I'm gonna upload these things to the workshop, but then I never do. This time I'm gonna actually try to remember to do that, so I'll leave a link in the description of of this, because this is actually really cool. Now, obviously, this can be be made bigger, and that's one of the things I like about this design is the fact that it can be made bigger, because essentially, since it's just if you have a sensor that is set to detect a certain color, you just have that go into an AND gate, and then that AND gate activate something that's activates the timer that goes for three seconds and then that's connected into a spud gun and then you just have something to essentially you have a button put into that and gate with a you know one tick pulse and now the thing I, I could have used mods uh for this there's like the whole there is the it's this there's the tick button i could have used that and it actually made you know it made simpler but i wanted to make this 100 percent mod free uh, which it is, uh, cause it's the, it only uses logic gates and then obviously in-game blocks and stuff and, you know, cardboard and stuff. So, yeah, it's a simple design, it works, and it's very effective, and it's, it might not be the most compact design for this type of creation, but it's effective, it's, as long as they don't change the physics of the spud gun, it's always gonna work, because an AND gate will always be, function the same way an AND gate does, a OR gate will always function the same way an OR, or gate does, I believe this was a NAND, yeah, there's a NAND gate, will always function the same way, it's the whole, since the way scrap mechanic is, uses logic, since it uses actual physical, the you know, real types of things that exist in real life, like these types of gates, then it's, yeah, it's gonna work, so as long as, if they change something about the spud gun or sensors, then maybe the design will have to change. But other than that, it's it's a pretty long-lasting design. It doesn't rely on glitches or anything. It's just cold, hard scrap mechanic. So either way, if you guys did enjoy this episode, be sure to like my name if you want to see more of my content. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment down below as is appreciated. And I will remember to put this in the description.
And also be sure to check out my Discord because that's been open for a while. And, you know, it's a good way to communicate things. I give updates about videos and stuff and about what's happening. And it also gives me a chance... Uh, to talk to you guys personally and for you guys to give me feedback on my videos or what you want to see. So yeah, either way, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!